Hi guys, and welcome to today's video on finding the sample size with the binomial distributions. Now, in previous lessons, we've been looking at binomial. This is the last lesson before we move on to continuous data. Binomial, remember, probabilities of successes and failures. There's just two outcomes, and we've dealt with a number of things like that. So, we were asked to find... Uh, in previous examples and in previous questions, the values of the total probabilities or the probability for one event, giving the probability of success and the number of trials you're doing. So we've been given the value of n and we've been given the value of p. But what happens if in maths they decide to, I don't know, give us the answer and miss one of the variables out? Well, the most common one that they miss out is the number of trials. And that's what this video today is going to deal with. Finding the number of trials that will give you a particular probability of success. The best way to explain this actually is with some worked examples. So let's fire this up. This one's from Cambridge Essential. And I'm using that as a textbook to teach my kids. And I love it. I think it's a phenomenal textbook. So the probability of winning a prize in a game of chance is 0.48. So that's now my probability of success, 0.48. Part A, what is the least number of games, okay, that must be played to ensure the probability of winning uh, at least once is more than 0 0.95? This, okay, so the least number of games. That suggests to me that I'm trying to find my value of n. All right, must be played to ensure the probability of winning at least once. So we'll define x as the probability of the wins, right? The number of wins that are gonna happen. And we want it to be at least once. So we're trying to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to one is uh, greater than, oh my goodness, what's going wrong with my greater than sign today? Greater than 0 0.95. Now, if you've watched previous videos, you will know that whenever you see this, x is greater than or equal to one, it's a trick. It basically says, don't do that. Work out what x is uh, 0 and take it away from 1. Why? Because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 goes on forever. The only value that doesn't actually get included in that would be the probability of x is equal to 0. Now, if we know that we're looking for x is greater than or equal to 1 to be 0 0.95, then we know that x is less, uh, sorry, is equal to 0 must be less than 0 0.05. Okay. So this is what we're looking to work out. And I know that I can do that by using my combination stuff. Remember the formula NCR, P to the R, and 1 minus P to the N minus R. So that's what I'm going to use to find my value for no uh, wins. So let's, do, let's work this out. So N, well, actually, we don't know. So N we don't know times C to the power of 0, because X is 0. Probability of success is 0 0.48 to the 0 and 0 0.52, in this case, to the power of m. Now, you can say, but, uh, and we've got to remember that's got to be less than 0 0.05. Well, I know from combination theory that anything that has a 0 here is actually a value of 1. I know that anything to the power of 0 is 1. And so this now just becomes 0 0.52 to the power of n is less than or equal to 5. Now, I'm going to delete those 1 times 1s because I don't really need them. And you're going to say, well, how do I solve this? And I'm going to say, using your trusty CAS calculator, of which mine has just loaded, thank you so much. Right, well, we have these wonderful things on here called solve. And I'm just going to put exactly that into my calculator. 0 0.52 to the power of x. I'm going to use x because it's there on my calculator. It's nice and easy. Uh, equals, oh, no, 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 no. Actually, I'm not going to do equals. Now, the great thing about the CAS calculators is they have inequality signs. And it should be able to solve this for me. 0 0.05 comma x. Uh, close my brackets and hit enter. And lo and behold, out comes. Well, there you go. It's told me that my x value needs to be greater than 4.58. So therefore, n must be greater than 4.58. And so two have a 0 0.5, a greater than 0 0.5 chance of winning at least one game. We would have to play five games. All right. So that's an interpretation question. Now, that was freaking awesome. Nice and easy. So when x is greater than or equal to one, just find zero. What about the least number of games that must be played to ensure the probability of winning at least twice is no more than 0 0.95? So they're just slightly changing it. So in this situation, I want the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2 
is greater than 0 0.95. And again, it's a trick. Now again, whenever you see these twice, there are two ways of doing it. Using a CAS, which we're going to do, or using a CAS, which we're still going to do. But anyway, think of it in reverse. Greater than or equal to 2 is the same as the probability that x is equal to 0 plus the probability is x is equal to 1 taken away from 1. So I now know using exactly the same idea here as we had before, I can actually say, well, then we must know that x equals 0 and x equals 1 should be less than 0 0.05. And I'm just going to use my combination stuff once again. So NCR, so we don't know what N is, NC0 times the probability of success, which is 0.48 to the power of 0 times 0 0.52 to the power of N plus, so that was for 0. Now we're going to do the same thing here, NC1 times 0 0.48 to the power of n times, uh, sorry, to the power of 1. Don't make that silly mistake. To the power, Oh, I've done it again. To the power of 1 times 0 0.52 to the power of n minus 1 has got to be less than 0 0.05. Right, simplifying this because I'm still going to use my calculator. I know that that is 1. I know that is 1 and that is still 0 0.52 to the power of n. So I can get rid of those for the moment. Now, plus... Again, I know that NC1, because of Pascal's triangle, that works out to be the value of N. This becomes 0 0.48 to the power of 1, which is just 0 0.48. And this becomes 0 0.52. The power of N minus 1 is less than 0 0.05. Okay, so putting that into my calculator, we're going to go solve for 0.52 to the power of X uh, plus uh, X times 0.48 times 0.52 to the power of, I'm going to put in brackets, x minus 1. Uh, close bracket is going to be less than 0.05. Do a comma and do x, and we're going to close my brackets. And lo and behold, up comes a revolting answer. Now, that's not what I was expecting. And it would appear that CAS calculators struggle with trying to do inequalities in that sense. So what I can do is actually solve it for equals to 0 0.05. Now, when I solve it for equals to 0 0.05, and I'm just going to go back and change this to an equal sign. Then what you'll notice is my calculator comes up and says more solutions may exist. And what it's giving me is x is equal to minus 1 point, what's that, minus 1.105. Well, we can't have an n value of minus 1.056, right? We can't have a negative number of trials, so that's ridiculous. So we now know that n, all right, has to be greater than 7.7985, and so it goes on. So... The number of trials, or the number of uh, yeah trials I'd have to do to have a probability for two or more wins would have to be eight. Hurrah! Now, what about if we want to find values of greater than two on my CAS calculator? Is there a way of me being able to do this? I can use my CAS calculator to simplify this quite awesomely. How? Well, it can do a lot of the hard work for me. In this situation, we're looking for the values where x is greater than or equal to two. So we're trying to find this n value, and this is how we do it on the Casio class pad. Now, the TI Inspire has very similar working out. Um, I'll do a video on that when I have a TI Inspire to be able to work with. But at this moment in time, this is what I'm going to do on my CAS calculator. So firing up my CAS calculator, uh, let's move it over for a minute. First things we're going to do, because I know I'm dealing with binomial data, I'm going to distribution, discrete, binomial CDF, because we want a range of values. X is greater than or equal to 2. My lower value is 2, because the question is saying let x be greater than or equal to 2, but I don't know what my upper limit is. So I'm going to put x there. Now likewise, I don't know what my number of trials is, so I have to put x again. What is my uh, probability of success? 0 0.48, and I'm going to hit enter. Now my calculator is going to crack it and go wrong argument type, and then it's going to seem to stop. Actually, all I needed it to do was write out that binomial CDF for me. Edit, copy. Now, going back into my menu, I actually want to draw a table of the results of that. And actually, it can do that for me. The edit and paste, put my formula back in and select it if you're on the class, uh, Casio class pad. Because if you don't select it, it's not going to do anything. And I'm going to hit this table button here. And lo and behold, it's going to come up and throw a load of results in the table. And when I scroll down, 
What the value on the left hand side is, is the X values, uh, you know, the number of um, positive successes. So one, two, three, four, and then the cumulative probabilities that actually happen. And if I scroll down, because I'm looking for a value of X or my, uh, my total probability, my cumulative probability to be greater than 0 0.95, you'll notice that, yay, eight is the one that actually gives me. So that seems so much easier than what we did previously. Yes. Now, just a word. Uh, I actually recorded this like 47 times because I could not get my calculator to show me all the values. So if it doesn't show you up to including eight, then you can actually hit that button just there, which I'll just click one more time, the XY button, and it will say that you can change your start and end values, which I had set to five. And so just using my CAS, I can go straight away there and say, well, therefore, N would have to be equal to eight. The CAS is, is a great calculator um, and it will help you find the sample size with binomial distributions. You can do it by pen and paper or you can do it with your TI Inspire or CAS Classpad. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. It is as ever a pleasure having your company. If you would like to, please subscribe and why not tell your friends out there about the Maths Guru YouTube channel. It would be great to have a few more people watching my videos. Otherwise, there's another video loading over there for you to watch. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.